Welcome to uh, Lynn County's 82nd Annual Meeting. Uh, my name's Ron O'Neill. I've had the pleasure of serving as president of the board this year. Um, we appreciate the participation by Zoom or phone. It's uh, kind of unusual circumstances that we're dealing with this year. Um, the Zoom has a feature um, on it, a chat feature. So you need to, and it depends on what kind of device you are, you're viewing on, but there should be a toolbar either at the top or the bottom of your um, screen. And if you just hover over the, uh, with the cursor or with your finger, it should bring up a feature that allows you to chat. And we have some capable tech help that will, will uh, answer any of your questions for you. Uh, with that, we will bring the meeting to order. And our first order of business, our attorney will give us the nominating report. Julie? A nominating committee appointed by the Board of Directors of the Lynn County Rural Electric Cooperative Association on May 21, 2020, and effective June 1, 2020, met via conference call due to COVID-19 on June 1, 2020 at 5.49 p.m. The meeting was called to order and Richard Running was chosen as chairperson thereof and Jeff Fairholm as secretary. Attention was called to the relevant provisions of Article 9 and Bylaw 3 of the Articles of Incorporation of the Association. After deliberation and discussion, the following were nominated for directors. District Number 2, Gloria Corbin, Kirk Highland, Todd Shores. District Number 3, Roger Krug and Al Ziskowski. District number seven, Steve Dolezal, Mark Ogden, Ron O'Neill. It was moved and seconded that the secretary of this committee post at the principal office of the Lynn County Rural Electric Cooperative Association at least 40 days before the annual meeting of the members to be held September 25, 2020, a list of the nominations for directors. The motion carried. There being no further business, the meeting was adjourned. And on behalf of Lynn County REC, I would like to thank the nominating committee members, which included Albert Schulista, Jeff Fairholm, Richard Running, Joel Avery, Jay Quimby, Craig Meskimen, and Jean Litz. Thanks, Julie. Um, our next order of business, we will have a uh, report by our treasurer, Kirk Island, and our secretary, Gina Sager. She will read the official notice and proof of mailing. Mr. President, I have a copy of the annual report that was mailed to each member that includes a balance sheet and statement of revenue and expenses for 2019. Our total utility plant continues to show a steady growth. As of December 31st, 2019, our total assets are $170,873,100. The Board of Directors has deemed it necessary to write off 349 uncollectible accounts, totaling $87,893.28. The Board of Directors also approved the allocation of $1 million of the 2019 mar margins to patronage. Thank you. As Secretary of your Board of Directors, I keep minutes of all member and board meetings and certify certain resolutions. I verify that every new member of Lynn County REC is issued a member information guide and a copy of the articles and bylaws. As prescribed in the bylaws on Monday, August 31st, each member was mailed an official notice of the annual meeting and a ballot for the election of three directors. As secretary, I want each of you to know that the records of the cooperative are kept in proper manner as required in the bylaws. Thank you. Um, a copy of the minutes from the 2019 annual meeting held September 27, 2019, that's been sent to the members. Do we have a motion to waive the reading of those minutes and approve the minutes? I'll make that motion. I'll second that. 
Been moved and seconded. It's been moved by Director Schraub and seconded by Director Squires to waive the reading of the 2019 annual minutes and approve those minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. We're going to pause for just a little bit if somebody wants to chat in and vote for or against. Slowest typer I am. I better wait a little bit longer. <laughs> um, the motion carries. Next will be the manager's report from Terry Sullivan. Good morning, <clears throat> and thank you for listening and watching the 82nd annual meeting of your cooperative. As we all know, 2020 has been an unusual and trying year, and we appreciate your patience and understanding at this time. The health of our members and our staff are of utmost importance to us. I will briefly provide you a review of the uh, 2019 financials and a quick summary of the ratio. The 2018 financial statements were in the September newsletter, which was mailed with your bill earlier this month. The cooperative finished the year with 51.5 million in revenue. Operating expenses were 45.8 million with power costs representing approximately two thirds of these operating expenses. The operating margin after fixed charges at year end was 1.6 million, which was up slightly from 2018. The cooperative received patronage allocations from our cooperative business partners, Central Iowa Power Cooperative, CFC, and RESCO of 2.7 million. Non-operating margins, which include interest income, equity investments, and patronage capital from other organizations provided an additional $313,000. This resulted in net margins of $4.6 million. Equity as a percentage of assets was unchanged from 2018 at 36.9%. Equity excluding SIPCO patronage allocations at Lynn County REC distribution equity only stands at 25.6%. For 2019, our services were up slightly at 776 new services versus 682 during 2018. We are encouraged by continued growth and development in our system, we annually review our load forecasts and work with our developers and other members to be sure we meet your growing needs. At this time, I'd like to provide you a little summary of the ratio that took place on August 10th of this year. Once the storm moved through, we only had power to one of our 38 substations. Our substations received power from large, tall, large or tall lines or, or, or the transmission lines which SIPCO or Central Iowa Power Cooperative and ITC maintain. Their transmission system, as you may have heard from the news, received significant damage with many lines and structures down. Our distribution system also sustained heavy damage. Lynn County, excuse me, Lynn County REC's distribution system is approximately half underground and half, half overhead. By the following day on 8-11 or August 11th, many of our substations on the south side of our system in the North Liberty and Coralville area we're able to receive power, and we were able to get approximately one third of our members power restored. Over the next several days, as transmission providers worked to rebuild lineup, and Lynn County REC also worked on broken poles and removal of trees in our lines, we were able to get approximately two thirds of our membership with power by noon on Friday, August 14th. For those members on the west side of the system, Hiawatha, Fairfax, Toddville, and West Cedar Rapids, a large portion of that time, we only had one of our substations, one of our five substations with power. We rerouted and pushed as much power as we could and as far as we could, but the majority of the Western Cedar Rapids metro area did not receive transmission service until Saturday or Sunday. The remaining thousand or so members outside of this area is where large amounts of damage regarding trees and poles occurred and restoration was hard and slow going due to the damage. To help us with our restoration efforts, we had line personnel in from 10 other cooperatives from the states of Iowa, Missouri, and, and Minnesota. At this time, we had approximately 100 personnel out in the field to help restore power. We would like to extend our thanks to those cooperatives and to all of our staff for the long hours that were put in and came and assisted us to get power back on as quick as possible. 
As noted in our October newsletter, we will be moving to, calendar, to a calendar month billing system. To do so, we will have an extended bill or long bill period. Your November bill will represent approximately 40 days in total, nine days in September and the entire month of October. This will help us to comply with new accounting requirements as our fiscal year end is December 31st, which is also our calendar year end. Currently your bill is billed from approximately the 22nd of one month to the 22nd of the next calendar month. And lastly, as a result of the pandemic, we did suspend this, we suspended the disconnection process until July this year for non-payment. Um, also at this time, the cooperative waived late fees for non-payment of electric bills from April through July during this period. Again, Lynn County here, REC is here to provide reliable power and at a reasonable rate. We understand that member expectations of reliability can change as each year passes. It is our hope that each year we get better at providing you better and more reliable service. Your cooperative is a not-for-profit not cooperative that recognizes that we are here to serve the member cooperatives. So again, thank you for the opportunity to be your electric provider. At this time, I would like to pause if there are any questions through the chat window. I can also answer those later, uh, but I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that members may have who are on Zoom or by telephone. Again, we should, before we summarize, we can take any questions you may have. And again, I appreciate your willingness to be the CEO and serve Lincoln County REC and its members. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Um, we are now going on with the uh, rest of our business meeting. Is there any unfinished business that uh, anyone would like to bring before the board? Is there any new business that you'd like to propose? Don? No answers? No questions. No. Okay. Um, now, Julie will uh, introduce our candidates, the directors, and report our election results. Julie? This year, the REC candidates running for the board in District 2 were Gloria Corbin, Kirk Highland, and Todd Shores. In District Number 3, it was Roger Krug and Al Zaskowski. In District Number 7, Steve Dolezal, Mark Ogden, and Ron O'Neill. The other members of our current board of directors include Ken Squires, Lisa Rose, Gina Sager, and Gary Schrock. The election results are for district number two, Kirk Highland, for district number three, Roger Krug, and for district number seven, Ron O'Neill. Thank you to all of the candidates for agreeing to run. All right. Um, thank you for your report. Um, so I would like to, on behalf of the board, thank you for your support over the uh, um, past year and, and hopefully we will not have quite the circumstances that we have uh, had this year to deal with. There will be uh, um, 40 $100 gift certificates applied to uh, electric uh, members' bills, and these were randomly drawn for those who voted either uh, electronically or by the mail. Um, the winners will be posted on Lynn County's website uh, and in the next newsletter. Um, other than that, I would like to thank you for your support and um, conclude this meeting. It's adjourned.